Hello guys and welcome to episode 56 of my Rome 2 Total War campaign with the Iceni tribe. Today I'm going to be continuing into Africa I think with the armies that are going to take over Cyrene. We're also going to be able to move out of Garama I'm, I'm sure pretty quickly after taking over this town in the last turn. But just before I get started I would like to announce that I have bought Caesar in Gaul and I am very willing to play it on my channel. So if you'd like to see it, make sure you leave me a comment and I will definitely get on that as soon as I can. Uh, hopefully videos will be back on a regular schedule over Christmas. I can't promise that it will continue after Christmas though because I'll be going back to uni and I'll have loads of work to do again. But either way, I'll try my best to keep up the videos over Christmas. And hopefully that will be joined by some Daisy, because the new Daisy standalone's out now, and Caesar in Ghoul. That will be the two most awesome things to add to my channel, and I really hope you guys want to see it, so please let me know. Anyway, now that's out of the way, let's get back into our campaign. So, Adiatorix has leveled up, let's give him extra philosophy, because that helps with culture conversion. Then, well, we can't really give him a decent household, so I guess we'll just wait until he gets his own. But that's now 100% Celtic, so we may as well begin to move out uh, my druid to a different area so that he can help, or be more helpful, with culture conversion. So, Lepsis and uh, Africa needs to convert in still. Uh, Cyrene and the province of Libya will need a lot of help so let's grab the druid and we can set him sail towards Cyrene because as soon as we take that I want to be changing the culture. So let's select Editorix and get him onto a boat towards Cyrene. Okie dokie. Let's have a look at my other units. We got Penios, we may as well move him towards Cyrene as well. Actually, we might be able to do an action on this guy this turn, which we can try and kill it with a concealed blade. Hopefully he's in range to do so, but we'll soon find out. Well, we wounded him. Good job, Penios. A 37% chance there of killing him, which is pretty high for an assassin. Then we got... My scout near boy, la di da di da. We have Katios, he can continue to move past Garama. And well, we can maybe think about trying to get rid of this scout. Although I will probably try and convert the scout, as they can come in very handy. Would you like some money? No, no, you would not. Okie dokie then. We shall move on with a Nauni. My skills are yours. So we may as well have her on the border near Machamedes. We can probably pull her all the way over to here and she'll still convert the culture of the entire province of Africa so that's not an issue. He's nearly done near Bodorgis, that's Cladios. And then we can move on to the Iron Winds in Carthage. So finally they're actually quite happy. We can start converting some of this stuff to be better for us. So let's make this into a lawmaster's hut and this one into a field. Then we can convert these settlements to things that are useful. Probably going to downgrade this trading port. We can convert this farm into a, another farm which is of our culture. And then we can change this military building into a bronze forge, maybe? No, I think I might just downgrade it. Okay, so this is the Carthaginian rebels. I'm going to leave them there for one turn. I could just sally forth and kill them. But it's really useful uh, while your province is a bit in a bit of turmoil to leave rebellions because... As you can see at the bottom of the public order details, it says malcontents leaving for the rebellion is giving me plus 30 public order per turn. And as long as I have a decent sized army here ready to take care of a huge army, then that's not an issue. And I can get away with, with leaving that there. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to start to move my navy 
towards Lepsis to get rid of this blockade because it's it's going to really start to, to hurt my provincial stability soon enough. Now, I can't really sally forth and kill them because they're on boats. So that can that's going to be an issue. So let's go back to my armies. We've got my army at Tur. If we upgrade this to a Chieftain's Hold, it's likely that even though I've only just taken this over, I will be able to move out and attack somewhere else. We've got the army in Bells. They're still having to deal with uh, the Serpents of the Torture, so I might actually go and do that this turn. Let's go ahead and fight them. Looks like they're going to retreat. And we can follow them up. So they're very depleted. Not entirely sure if this is a good idea of uh, sort of fighting this on the battle map, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because I know you guys love to watch the battles and my men chop up people as they just charge them down. It's a really good sight sometimes. So let's jump in and fight this on the battle map. I really thought there would be a lot more forest than this. Apparently not. So, I'm going to keep it dry. So we can see what we're doing. All my men almost look camouflage. All my druidic nobles. These guys with their 80 men units. We can spread them out and we can just charge towards the enemy. That will be hilarious. And then we can just chop them down. We shall back them up with my spear band and sword band. And the slingers can follow up. Although I probably won't be using them. Then I'll get my scout riders. Well, they can all stick together. And I can begin uh, to move this army forward. So let's uh, get them all into a group. We're going to uh, lock their group. And then we can just charge towards them. Bravo. Get my cavalry out on the open on the right. And these men should be able to run down their entire army on their own, to be honest, because all of the enemy units are so depleted. So we can have a look at the enemy army. You can see there these longbow hunters, 15 men. You've got Blood Swarm, they're like 30 men. We've got a few units of those, and then they're Germanic Scout Riders. Well, they've only got four men. So there we go. Although that looks a bit more than four. Oh, it's two units, that's why. So my men are running through the forest at the moment. Don't need to worry about fatigue really, we're just going to run them down. But these druidic nobles definitely look good in the snow. It's their natural habitat. So Bloodsworn have swords, they can get charged down pretty easily, and the Germanic Scout Riders are just going to die, the Longbone Hunters are going to die. I think I might just charge in with my cavalry and, the enemy's hidden units. and we can kill them. Even these Night Hunters. I, I don't even think that they're going to be too much of an issue. Although, if they did come together, it could become an issue. Let's try and kill this general first. Give him a frenzied charge. See if we can kill off the general. They've got a charge coming in with their Germanic scout riders. I don't think they're going to last very long. Now I'm going to charge into their longbow hunters who are trying to uh, have a go at my scout riders. That's going to kill off all those units very, very quickly. Our hidden units have been discovered. Scouts. And their sword masters are actually calming up my scout riders. Wow, okay. Didn't see that coming. I guess I probably should have done that straight away. It's just sort of uh, charged and then left and then come back again. But never mind, eh? They will bleed for Our hidden units have been discovered. Let's begin to charge towards them with my rest of my men. 
trying to find units I can actually target. Disengage my my men now. It's really hard to see what's going on in this forest, but it should be okay. Our general is under attack. Probably taking a lot more losses in my cavalry than I probably should have. But there we go. Druidic nobles. Gonna slaughter these club levy. Oh my lord, look at that. Just slicing them to pieces. The Judic nobles are just incredibly powerful. Riders ready. So I charged into these night hunters because they're going to come for me anyway. I'm going to break off these scout riders because they're being uh, sort of clumped on by infantry, which is not what I need to happen. I can get my scout riders over on the other side back. Because now they've stopped fleeing. Now these night hunters are dealt with. I can run them both away. Our hidden units have been discovered. Gonna keep my druidic nobles in the right direction. Well, we might be able to just charge into them now. And then once they're engaged, I can swing round these scout riders and hit them all in the back. Now these night hunters will probably try and engage them, but luckily my horses are too fast and we'll get the charge in anyway. So here come the Druidic Nobles. Turn some round to kill these Bloodsworn. Let's have a look at how this goes for them. The men are wavering. Oh, straight through the face. These guys are not having a good day. The oaks are our strength. More carnage. And we've won the day. Size of victory, of course, but we did lose 205 men. Um, can't say I'm that proud of that victory. My scout riders probably shouldn't have died so badly, but then again, they kind of disappointed me with how much damage they did. One of the scout rider units actually got 120 kills, which isn't too bad. But somehow their general survives. Are you serious? Oh, never mind. I forgot that we already made them route, so he's going to die anyway. Move out! So that's job done, and the slave uprising is crushed, as you can see. The strong will always beat the weak. It is the way of the world, and the will of the gods. Wasn't really my slave uprising to crush, but we picked it up, and so it was our responsibility. So now we can increase my general skill. Now he's a warrior. We're going to go with probably offense. To give plus 10% morale for all units during offensive battles because I'm the majority of the time attacking. We could go with virtue to increase uh, public order from characters or even dread to remove morale from all enemy units. Dread's always a nice one to have so I'm going to go with that. Then we're going to set my man into Force March Stance and head back to Bells to sort out the public order. Ready for battle. Okay, so with this sacred enclosure being finished, hopefully that'll help out. Uh, we're still getting issues though with uh, public order, probably due to this Yurt Maker actually. I think I have to downgrade that because that is causing too much negative public order. So, next, let's have a look at the other armies we have to move. So the Swords of Power can't really go anywhere. Unless I can move them out. No, we're going to wait until the Chieftain's Hold is finished for them. Then the Will of Andrasta. We need to set them back to normal stance, although I can't because uh, they've only been moved this turn and they're in Force March already. 
Then we got Burning Men in Kamladunen. Noble Stags in Zarmize Gatusa. That looks like it's going to be a bit rebellion next turn. Bit of an issue. Let's try and avoid that. So I'm going to go to my finance. We can go to taxes. Trying to work out how to do this. I've done it before. Details. There we go. Okay. So let's go to Zarmize Gatusa. We'll turn off the tax, but still going to cause a rebellion next turn. So we're going to have to deal with that. So let's keep the tax on anyway. And that's basically due to me taking Petra de Val in this turn. But never mind. We we can deal with rebellions all over the place. It doesn't really matter. As my empire expands, it's only going to get worse. Right. Let's uh, see, that's about all done for the troop movement. We already had one battle. Hopefully next turn we'll have a battle for Cyrene. So let's go ahead and click the end turn button. My technology will be finished, that'll also help out a lot. As clouds gather, Wise men look for friends to shelter them. In you, I believe we have such friends. Well, this could be a good idea. Yeah, they're in, right in the middle of my empire, but... I think a while back I had a trade agreement with them and stuff. I actually still do. Instead of wasting my time sending an army back to kill them, I think it might be better just to go for a defensive alliance. So yeah, I'm going to actually accept this for now. The gods bless you with wisdom and my Take this subsidy. Our treasuries were over full. <laughs> wow. NASA Moon is Doing it again. They won a peace treaty for 15,000 coin. Now, that is incredible. Especially considering they only control, what is that, two provinces? It's very tempting. Because I could pull my, my armies out of Africa and head over, like, behind them towards the uh, Belemis, which is basically Egypt. Then we could head up to the Seleucids and kill the Bithynia as my armies converge across the top of Eastern Europe. So yeah, I think this is worth taking for the money. We can always attack them again like we did last time. And in the meantime we can, we can sort of jump around them and hit the Blemis. So we're going to accept it. So here we are, Hidden Agent Exposed, Andy Tarx. Zahamase Gatusa is, uh, had its rebellion. We've got improved shipbuilding now being researched after our other technology being finished and sabotage by Bedorix in Petra Deva. And an increase in rank for Cladios as he has almost converted the culture near Bedorgis. So, with that, we can see what we can do about increasing his skill. So, cultural propaganda. This gives him plus six cultural conversion. That's pretty impressive. So, I'm actually going to go with that. We've got a construction report with the sacred enclosure being finished in bells. That's make that into a Groverous Murder and see if we can get away with moving out the army. Goes down to minus one. That will be fine on the next turn because there's still minus seven provincial instability which will slowly disappear and with this Groverous Murder being finished that will be fine. So let's move the army now from Bells and attack towards Gallic. Next turn, 
we can attack them there. So the army at Tur. Now it goes down to minus seven if I leave. And we can move towards the Kataiori. Even though I think I have a trade agreement with them now. Yeah, it's actually giving me 490 income. So maybe I can stop here. We can jump over the Odorissian Kingdom because they're my ally. And then we can attack Bithynia with those armies. Okay. And we got to work out what we want to do in Africa. Since I've now made peace with the Nasamornis, I can focus on taking care of the Carthaginian Rebellion and then moving my armies past, past the Nasamornis to hit the Blemias. Thirsty for battle. Before I do that, let's have a look at what we can do here in Garima. I may as well upgrade this Grove of Rismerta to a Shrine of Rismerta. Got the money to do so now. We can leave Katios by Garima. Now if I move the army out, it goes down to minus 5. That's going to rebel in 24 turns. So it should be perfectly happy before it does so. Let's move the army across the desert, keep them on the path. Then we can uh, travel through their lands, I don't care if I trespass, and I can attack the uh, Blemias. Now I need to get my scout to go and have a look at what's happening with this settlement here. Apparently it's called Ammonium. He can cross the desert and go and have a sneaky peek. Meanwhile the Mist of Doom can just walk past Cyrene I guess. And towards uh, Parate Ton Neon. But the enemy army retreated. Let's just go through the rest of these messages quickly. Cultural plus four cultural influence. Nice. For my druid S and Alni. That is very, very useful. I'm going to get her over to the border now. Then we've got unhappy populace. Africa, no surprise there. Household expands. Plus one zero and plus one line of sight for my statesman. Shipwrights report. We've got some Levy Freeman being finished in my navy up here at Rugion. These guys are going to go and help take care of the Amber Warriors who are blockading Mons Regius. Now I just wanted to point out one thing that's really awesome about having an ally right now is that the uh, Gnosis has actually sent an army all the way up here to Petrodevar to help me kill the BFE, which is extremely strange. I think they were already at war with them and they'd probably just want to kill them off, but this is ex incredibly useful because it means I don't have to move out the army from Petrodevar to do it myself. So there's one thing about having allies. They actually do your dirty work for you. So this rebel army here, the Dacian rebels, or Dacian rebels, they could be an issue, although I have a massive army waiting in Samasea Katusa, but it's the same thing I'm going to do with, that I'm doing with Africa. I'm going to make use of the malcontents leaving for the rebellion. It's giving me plus 51 public order per turn at the moment. Definitely worth holding on to to make sure that uh, my public order doesn't come any worse. Now, we can also repair this Shrine of Epona because that will help out with the happiness. Then we can get... We've got the peace negotiated with the Nasa Mornis and the faction destroyed of the Bastone. And the path blocked Adiatorix. Okay. Now let's get back to my troop movements. See if there's any more battles we can find before the end of the episode. The scout going to have to stay... Actually, I can move him out away from boy now because boy is now in a defensive alliance with me so let's head him to the front lines we can send him to spy on bithynia katios he can start to head towards the border with this army and now he's fine i've already moved her adiatorix he doesn't really need to come down anymore unless i still want to convert this province for when i do take it which might be a good idea, so I'm going to continue him on his way anyway. Gladios, still converting. 
The iron winds. They can continue sailing across the coast. Now what I can do. Uh, here at Makamedes, I'm going to make this into an artisan's lodging again. But this time I'll make it into a wealth generating building. But it's these ports I can now upgrade to harbours. And here, in these harbours, I can make slingers, like slinger missile raiders, which are much better than the Levy Freeman uh, raiders because they uh, have the range that they need to kill other units. I often find myself getting killed by javelins, which is really annoying. Slingers will outrange them. So here in uh, Magna Gratia, I can probably get away with converting this arsenal lodging into a goldsmith to increase the wealth generated from this province. Then, up in Rome, can we do something here? Yep, we'll probably make another harbour. We've got plenty of money to spend. We can upgrade a warlord's hold here. And from that, we can upgrade to this warlord's hold. And upgrade the farm. What else can we do? Stuff on the front line is probably more useful. So let's have a look at some of these provinces. At Tur, let's upgrade the tavern to a mead hall. We've got the food to be able to do that and it will help with the public order. And up at the top, well, Mons Regius can start building a harbour because then we can build a navy to take care of anything in the north, although after this our navy is destroyed, I probably won't need it, but it generates wealth anyway, so not an issue there, and we can also upgrade the village itself. Now what else we can do, I'm not sure, but we used up a lot of our money, so I'm not going to be too concerned about that, because I'm sure it's pretty boring for you guys to watch me just upgrade buildings all day. So Swords of Power, not going to move. Will of Andrasta can take them off force march starts the last and we can probably start moving them towards Machamedes. okay then we can get the burning men well they're gonna stay there we can turn them off force march starts and the noble stags gonna wait consorts of morrigan can we get away with attacking them this turn i think i'm gonna wait another turn and Braukus is vanquishes Petrodeva. We can move them out, I'm sure. But whether or not I actually want to yet is a different question completely. Need to see if Nossus takes care of this army first before I, I think of anything else. Although I may just do it myself. So let's do that. One last battle. Killing off the BFE. So we have reinforcements from Petra for Tvar actually to help kill these guys. So they have mercenary Dacian spears or Dacian spears, um, mercenary spear horsemen, and Katos, their general. We have a huge army. Let's go run them down. So we're going to make this nice and quick, start the battle, skirmishers. run up my skirmishers, run up my army, you know they going to keep them in uh, tighter formations, we can run up the cavalry Ready? and I'm going to also run up arrived. my general. So here we go, I have uh, quite a lot of cavalry so I don't want to get my, my units too far ahead of themselves. What's happening here at the bottom of the screen is quite annoying. There we go, it's finally fixed Scout itself. Riders. Scout riders aren't going to have fun taking on these military spear horsemen on their own, so I'm not going to make them do that. Stop my skirmishers where they are, just in case the cavalry decides to charge. Then what I'm going to do is select some spear units, and they can charge towards the enemy cavalry, while my sword units can charge towards their infantry. 
Our general is under attack. Okay. Job done. I want to select these uh, skirmishers to stop them throwing spears in my back. Get them to either side. But with my sword band charging into the side of these mercenary dashing spears, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a huge massacre. And you can see that's exactly what's happening. All of their men have already routed. And now all that's left is this noble horseman unit that just got annihilated by javelins. Look at this guy here. He took a javelin in the eye. Ah, oh, and his poor horse as well. It's got like a javelin through its face. Jeez. Okay, anyway, gonna end the battle there. <laughs> it's pretty quick. That was one minute and 45 seconds. 40 losses for me, 679 for the enemy. Size of victory, bravo. Is that all? And an increase in rank for Abaros. Also, the military traditions of Abaros' vanquishers has reached rank six and the BFE are finally destroyed. Good job. So, we can now make this person a great leader, Rebaros. And for the traditions of the army, we can probably add another skill. Or we can increase something that they already have. I think either Grand Camp following is a good one. Dressed is chosen is okay plus 10 percent uh, morale for all units during battles in own or allied territory is good but i don't often fight in my own territory so <laughs> probably not that great i think grand camp following is probably the best one unless you want to go for inexorable horde which increases the weapon damage inflicted by all melee units which is another good one I think we're going to go with an inexorable horde because the majority of this army is like sword band and so on. So that's going to help them out a lot. And there we go. So that's going to be it for this episode, guys, unfortunately. Please let me know if you want to see Caesar in Ghoul or Daisy on my channel. So that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.